Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third video in the job series and today we're talking about interviews. I have many things that you and the company's hiring you need to hear, so you might want to stick around and even take some notes. I'm even going to share a secret trick that I use to avoid doing home assignments or whiteboard style interviews. Everyone loves secrets. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideu.com, welcome to another video. If you're new here, you should know that this is mostly a Scala channel. However, I make all kinds of software related videos like this one. Before we get into the video, please do me a favor and help me fix this. We are on the road to 10K subs and you could make it happen today if you chose to. Also, please hit the like button while you're at it. It's a very easy way to show your support. Last but not least, this video is brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on Patreon. Your contributions allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then choose to spend again with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. Cool. Boy, oh boy, where do I start? Unless you've been living under a rock, you surely know how broken the interview process is, especially at fan companies. There are multiple stages, whiteboard torture, home assignments, and for the love of God, can you please stop asking us to invert binary trees? Who do you think you are, Christopher Nolan? At this point, I should probably mention that this video is not going to be a rant. Interviews suck. There, I said it. Let's move on. In fact, I will say one thing. Remember how in the previous video about CS degrees, I mentioned that other professions like doctors or lawyers require government accreditation, but programmers don't? Well, even though I'm not saying that we should, but maybe if we did something that went beyond degrees, like passing the bar for lawyers, for example, maybe the interview process would get better. You pass the bar, your CV shows a good track record, let's do a cultural fit, and we're good to go. But then maybe other things will get worse. I don't know, I'm not saying it's a good idea, it's just a thought. Feel free to discuss in the comments below. All right, now the goal for this video is to help you and the companies to realize what options we have. And also I'll share a little bit of my personal experience. Also, I should probably mention that this video is not exactly targeted for juniors. So if you are a junior who's trying to get his foot in the door, I have only one advice for you. In fact, this advice is very general. So even if you're not a junior, listen up, build stuff, a lot of stuff. Your GitHub should be either filled with small projects that are experiments, or you should have this one big passionate hobby project of yours. Building things is good for your technical skills and it will help you to get a job because now A, you have something to show and B, you get more confident about your abilities. All right, let's begin. In my opinion, we have only three options. Option number one, you roll over and you play the game. After all, it's a don't hate the player, hate the game situation. Option number two, apply to smaller companies who neither have the money nor the fang arrogance and thus usually won't put you through multiple rounds of interrogation. And number three, my favorite, stand your ground. Admittedly, this only works for small to mid-sized companies. The last one is obviously the most exciting one, but please don't skip the first two, even though you can. All right, so you can choose to complain about it all day, but most likely you won't change the fact that huge companies will keep abusing their power. Their position is actually quite understandable. They have so many applicants that they have to filter through them somehow. They for sure automatically scan our CVs for keywords like CS degrees, years of experience, and obviously the tech stack. So if you want to work for them, I'm sorry, but there is no way around it. You have to jump through the hooks. Now there are exceptions, of course, like talent acquisition, aka acquire hire, but let's not get carried away. If you want to prepare yourself for such an interview, understand that it's like an exam. The knowledge required to pass it is not something that you use in your day to day. So you study hard, you pass the exam, you get the job, and you forget most of it almost immediately afterwards. Tel Aviv. You only need to study two things, or three, depending on how you count. Off by one errors, am I right? It's algorithms, data structures, and system design. Now, this is the part where most YouTubers prompt you to buy their courses, but all of my courses are free here on YouTube, and also I don't have any about algorithms. Anyway, just make sure to include the word interviewer in your search queries, and you'll find a bunch of books and other resources about all this stuff. The only advice I can give you is to ask yourself whether you really want to work for a huge corporation. Sure, they have the money and it looks awesome on your CV, but nothing in this life is perfect. This may come as a surprise for you, but I never actually applied for FANG. I never wanted to work for them. Now, I'm not saying that this is not going to change in the future, but at least for now, there are things that I would need to give up that no money can buy. Now, your second option is to apply to smaller companies, which is something that I always preferred. By the way, small does not necessarily mean startups. There are many mid-sized companies out there with hundreds of employees, but relatively small dev teams. It's quite common for companies that maintain some sort of a web platform to have around 40 devs. 
comprised of back-end, front-end, mobile, and DevOps. However, the total number of employees is easily in the hundreds. Okay, so whereas smaller companies might request a home assignment from time to time, for the most part, they're concerned with the cultural fit. Devs are expensive, and as such, it's harder for smaller companies to tolerate a resource loss of onboarding an engineer who is going to leave after a couple of months just because of a cultural mismatch. We'll talk about soft skills in the next video, so we're not going to get into it here. Also, I'm a big Simon Sinek fan and he doesn't like the term, so we're going to use the term people skills. And so instead of drilling those algorithms, consider actually building something in your free time. Fill up your GitHub with hobby projects. Now, many devs are concerned about building something that nobody needs, but this is not what it's about. You're not building a company here. So feel free to build something that nobody cares about. Sometimes you just need to learn a new tech stack. So feel free to build a to-do app or a calculator or literally millions of other things that nobody needs. For instance, if you've been subscribed for a while, you know that I have this to-do app that I have used and rewritten so many times in my videos to different stacks. I highly recommend this approach. Another tip I can give you is to pay attention to what's happening to the tech in your field. Now, you don't necessarily need to learn every tech stack out there, but it really helps a lot if you can at least talk about it. Now, what I find interesting about smaller companies is that you might be surprised by who is going to interview you. Your first round could range from an HR lady who barely has any experience hiring devs all the way up to a CTO. It helps doing your homework before you apply. Figure out who you're going to talk to and maybe even approach the devs who work there and poke around. Now let's finally talk about the third option, but let me be crystal clear, I won't accept any responsibility for this. If you decide to go through with this, you will lose some opportunities, so don't blame me and study for the interviews instead. In fact, none of this is even a real advice, I'm simply sharing what I did in the past and what I tend to keep doing in the future. The idea is to help companies understand that if they insist on putting you through a technical interview, that you're going to be very likely to fail because you're not prepared. After all, it's like an exam, remember? And you didn't study for it. By the way, in case it's not obvious, this won't fly with Fang. It's a take it or leave it situation with them. Now, you might be wondering at this point, why would I do such a thing? Isn't it better to give it a go? Who knows, maybe I'll succeed. Poker face, my friend. You need to know your worth, and it has nothing to do with arrogance, even though I admit that there is a fine line between arrogance and what we're talking about here, so you've been warned. Your goal is to explain to them that after you fail the technical interview, both parties lose. You lose the opportunity, and they lose talent. It's funny how it's talent before you get the job and the resource after you get it. Anyway, don't forget that it's not about you not being able to do the job, it's about passing the exam-like interview process. We're talking about you potentially having a CS degree and years of experience at multiple companies. I'll keep reiterating this, usually both parties know that you can do the job, you just didn't study for this exam, that's all. And so, if you don't get the job, you both lose, and so you're merely asking them not to put you in this position. Now, I warned you guys, many companies will confuse this with arrogance and won't go for it, so it really comes down to your people skills. Help them understand that Things like the cultural fit and maybe a couple of technical questions, especially about systems design or technical preferences, like for instance, what's your opinion about testing, is usually enough to make the decision. By the way, I'm not bragging, but me personally, I need like five minutes in the room with you to know whether you can do the job or not. And I believe other senior devs have the same ability. It's not like I have some magic superpower. To be fair, if you're a junior, I'll probably need a little bit more time and I'll ask you a technical question or two. Maybe I'll even send you on a quest to find a substring or something similar. But even then, it's like half an hour tops. And if you're a junior without a CS degree, please do everyone a favor. And as already mentioned, build something and put it on GitHub so that we have at least something to talk about. Now, I'm sure that many of you are asking yourself whether I did something like this in the past, and the answer is of course I did, and yes, I lost some opportunities this way, but I also found others. It's not like I'm unemployed or anything. Contrary to popular belief, I am not a full-time content creator. I am a full-time dev, and I make content for you guys in my free time, so give it a like. In fact, I've never been hired after doing a technical interview or a home assignment. It helps not to be adamant about it and use it as a negotiation tactic. Saying things like, I usually don't do this, but if you insist, I'll have a look at the home assignment. But this is not just some trick. You actually have to walk the walk and do the assignment if they ask you to. They rarely do though. Now, before you ask, of course, having a YouTube channel full of tutorials and even live coding helped my credibility along, but so did my GitHub full of projects. So please don't use my fame as an excuse. In fact, here's a little secret. I was not born with a YouTube channel. So have a blog or something. Make sure people know who you are. Allow me to finish this video by summarizing a couple of my interview stories. There was this one company for which I spent four, not full days on a home assignment. After I sent it, I didn't hear back from them for 10 days or so. I sent them an email 
They rejected me the next day without providing any feedback. I'm sure that you have many similar stories of your own. In fact, please share them in the comments below. And also don't forget to hit the like button. It helps a ton. Another story was a well-known large company. It wasn't Fang, but it was a world-recognized brand. This is when I tried to explain to the HR lady that I shouldn't need to do the home assignment because my GitHub is full of projects and my YouTube is full of tutorials. What I liked about her is that she admitted that she didn't know what to say and so she had to think on her feet. She then proceeded giving me the equal opportunity for all applicants speech. The TLDR is that I did end up talking to a team lead who would have loved to hire me without doing any home assignments or technical interviews but fate came in between. They needed an employee and I needed a client. And as already mentioned in the previous video about CS degree, unfortunately, bureaucracy runs the world. I have other stories like this, but these two are the most memorable ones. The point is I walked the walk and so can you. I warned you about the potential consequences though. So please don't blame me if the interview doesn't go as expected. Before I go, I would like to leave you with a seemingly unrelated advice, but it is adjacent to the topic of interviews and I don't want to make another video about it. As a junior dev, you should play around with a couple of languages, but specialize in one, because when the time comes to apply for a mid-level position, it helps a lot if you don't need to look up the syntax on Stack Overflow. That said, when the time comes to be hired as a senior dev, knowing just a programming language, even if you know it well, is just not good enough. I have 12 years of Scala experience, but if this was everything, it would be very challenging to find a job. These days, my interests lie in DevOps and tooling, so I'm trying to focus on those. The point is, dive into something that is beyond just programming languages or even tech stacks. To give you a couple of examples, you could focus on testing, databases, or build tools. Just take something that interests you, or you could also chase the money and choose this way. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. You might be interested in the previous one, and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video. If you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you want to support tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon, GitHub sponsors, and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.